All right. Happy Friday. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ed, and we're here at our beautiful headquarters at Torrance, California of Zojirushi, America. So we got a great, great show for you today. Going to be pretty unique because we have a unique product. It's our multi-cooker. You've heard me talk about it before. I've mostly talked about the features. Today, we're going to show you how to make all of these things we have here. We have a whole batch of yogurt. I got a special video that I shot yesterday about the yogurt process making. Incredible. You can use the Zodrushi multi-cooker to make yogurt, quinoa, brown rice, white rice. It's a steamer, sears and sautés, and slow and low cooks. So how many is that? That's nine in one functions. All in this one machine. So at a great price point, looks fantastic. Beautiful brushed stainless steel. Uh, kind of looks like a little spaceship here with the handle. But uh, definitely want to pick it up. You go on shop.zojirushi.com. You can find it there. You can find it in our sales section. I'm not going to tell you how much, but it is in our sales section. So if you go to shop.zojirushi.com, you can find it there and get it at a huge discount just for right now. That's why we're doing this one. So some of the features you can do. Uh, we have pot roast going over here. That's going to be our close-up today because I want to make all of you starving on this Friday afternoon. Two o'clock, I know, we're just getting down from lunch, right? Now let's pick it up, start thinking about dinner. You can get the Zojirushi uh, multi-cooker next week. Have your dinner plans set out with some beautiful quinoa salad, or maybe you want to make some fresh yogurt at home. And just uh, this is a little secret thing I got going over here. This is going to be our seafood nabe. So you've seen me make a nabe before with some of our other products. But I wanted to show the versatility of using the ECCAC60 uh, is, is a, is a uh, hot pot kind of thing. Let me look in here. I'm going to join in on the chat as I always do. Make sure that we are good to go. Are we good? We're good, right? Okay, cool. All right, there we go. Good afternoon to you too, Kenneth Huey. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. All right, guys, if you have any questions in the chat, I got it up right here. So if you uh, have anything you'd like to see, anything you'd like me to reiterate, Ed, slow down, you're going too fast. That's why I'm here. I'm here for you. So let me know if you have anything you'd like to see. Philip, thank you for watching too. Right here. I'm right here in the chat as well. And we have our staff always standing by, ready to answer any questions you may have. So without further ado, let's get into the multi-cooker and its nine-in-one functions. So I'm going to show you a few of them here today. Uh, notably, we have the quinoa salad. So it's a beautiful, fresh salad for the spring. I know Easter's coming up. And in this salad, which is available in the recipe book and also at zojirushi.com, you can have this beautiful multicolor quinoa salad. Inside is avocado, uh, tomato, cucumber. And it's all dressed with this beautiful red, white, and vinegar and olive oil with a little salt and pepper uh, dressing. Fantastic. The smell coming in here, I'm telling you, from the pot roast over here to the quinoa salad to even just this nice, creamy, uh, yogurty smell over here. And then all of that, which I'm going to show you here in a, in a few minutes, is pretty outstanding. So the quinoa is some is a if you're not familiar with it it's a ancient grain originated in South America uh, around Peru the Incans actually cultivated it very healthy for you very uh, low carb I believe I could be wrong if someone wants to correct me in the in the chat I'm always up for corrections if I'm wrong so the great thing about quinoa is uh, it's a great uh, healthier alternative if you're not eating um, especially gluten I'm pretty sure quinoa is gluten free. But if you're staying away from wheats, if you're staying away from rices and carbs in general, it's a great, healthy, fresh alternative. So it's very bright. It uh, has a nice little bite and tooth feel to it. In our recipe, as I said, fresh avocado. That vinaigrette, I can, it is piercing my nose. It is, smells so good. I know it's just simple. It's just red wine vinegar, olive oil, and then a little salt and pepper. But I'm telling you, the, simp the simplicity of it all is fabulous. And look how well it turns out. If you put this uh, at a, you know, at a nice luncheon or a brunch or something like that, I don't think you'd have anyone walking up saying, what is that? They'd say, that looks really good and I want that. And how'd you make it? Well, I made it here in my EC, uh, 
My Zojirushi multi cooker, ECCAC60. Six quarts, baby. All right, Miggy Martinez, thank you for watching. And Tammy Jones, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, guys. So we do uh, a lot of these for you. And these live streams are for you, the customers, not only to see some of the, the products that we feature and ones that we want to sh uh, show you, you know, hey, this is a really awesome machine we just came out with or some awesome new bottles, but we want to show you how to best utilize all of these, these things as well. What comes included with the multi-cooker? Get the multi-cooker itself, the lid, which as I've shown before has a stand-up feature. You're going to get a stainless steel steamer, the pot, the pot, the pan that we use for this one, the pot is really the star of the show. I'm going to explain about a little bit more about that later when I start making the nabe. And, of course, the Zojirushi rice cup, as you know and love. All right, so the yogurt. Let me tell you about yogurt. Fresh yogurt takes an incredibly long amount of time. Why? Because you have to grow the bacteria and grow the cultures and things like that. But with the Zojirushi, uh, and, and what make, makes it more difficult is that the heat consistency has to be pretty much right on. Otherwise, let, let me ask you, if you ever put hot milk in a pot, what's going to happen? It's going to steam up because, you know, all those uh, milk solids are going to poof up. So you don't really want that. And with the multi-cooker, what it does is it maintains a temperature that is just low enough. You can kind of just push the button, set it, and forget it. And I'm going to show you right here. All right, so this, I'm going to show you the yogurt setting here on the multi-cooker. We're obviously recording this a little bit earlier because the process takes an entirety of eight hours. So uh, don't think you'd want to hang on to the live stream that long to watch me make this yogurt. But basically, you're just going to have some milk. And this is whole milk. This is how you're going to start the process. Go ahead and just pour that into the multi-cooker. And then on the selection, on the menu setting, we're just going to come over here to uh, yogurt, which is going to be, you're going to see the little arrow move around. Keep going, keep going. Okay, brown rice, quinoa, yogurt. So once we get here, it's as simple as just hitting the start button, which is going to be here. Put the lid on. And in four hours, you're going to have to come back and add a cultured yogurt to the, the uh, warmed milk. The whole process takes a total of eight hours. But after four, that's when you're going to add the, uh, the cultured yogurt. So make sure you, you set a timer. Come on back. And in eight hours, you're going to have an entire pot worth of yogurt at a fraction of the cost that you could buy it all at the store. And you know what's in it. All right, everyone. So it's been about four hours. The uh, preheat button uh, light has gone off on the front you see so now it's time to turn this warm milk into yogurt what we're going to do is go ahead and try to strain off any of the thick stuff that you're going to get just uh there's this particular batch there's not too many many of it so we're just going to go ahead and skin the top okay that's about good enough and then from here what we're going to do is we have 12 ounces of non-flavored uh, whole milk yogurt sitting here on the side. All we're going to do is add about two cups of the warmed milk to this yogurt. What this is going to do is help thin it out. So when we put it back into the machine, it allows it to come in uh, easily and smooth. And all of those cultures are going to be able to uh, expand and go all the way across all of the milk that's inside the uh, pot already. So this is after four hours. It's pretty thick over here. Just trying to punch it down, get some of the clumps out. Obviously using a ladle is a little bit more difficult than just a mixer or a spoon or a whisk or something, but it's what I had handy. Okay, we're just mixing that around. Almost got all the clumps out here. It is kind of thick, you see, and that's kind of what you want. You want it to be able to pour all the way in, but you just want to get knocked down all of that. So it's basically like you're growing this yogurt with the milk, you're expanding the size of it. And then we're gonna put that into the multi-cooker and that's gonna help expand it across and grow those cultures to make an entire pot of yogurt. All right, I think we got it pretty good here. 
still a little bit thick, but let's go back in. Ooh. All right, let's get all of that in there. Make sure we don't leave out any of that good bacteria that you get from yogurt. I'm spilling all over. So now we're just going to stir this up. And all I'm trying to do is make sure it's all nice and even and thin. Okay, I think we've got it. I think it's all incorporated, mixed well enough. Okay, so here's the tricky part. This one's going to really, really throw you for a loop. You put the lid on and hit start. And then in four hours you come back and there's yogurt. Amazing. There we go. So in another four hours, we're going to come back. We're going to show you the finished product of the yogurt. Uh, tomorrow on the live stream, filming this day before, tomorrow on the live stream we're going to have the yogurt that we made today in this machine to show you just how well it keeps, how well it looks, how well it tastes, and everything else after making it in the Zojirushi multi-cooker. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us again. It's been another four hours, and I just want to show you our finished product. Here it is, the yogurt that we spent all day making. It told you that four hours and eight hours, it's a labor of love. But if you see, it's a little bit thin consistency right now. That's okay. Uh, once it cools, it'll, it'll thicken up just a little bit too, so you'll, it'll be more of the yogurt that you're used to. But I'll tell you, the smell is absolutely there. It smells just like yogurt. And I don't think you'll ever have anything fresher uh, unless you make it at home using a more lab laborious uh, kind of process. So eight hours in the ELCAC multi-cooker, we were able to set it and kind of forget it. We came back at four hours. We added the yogurt cultures in. And then after that, another four hours gets us this, you know, just beautiful ribbony looking yogurt. Uh, can't wait to try it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you uh, sticking with us on all three of these little clips. I know it's a little bit different, but just because how long this process takes, I wanted to show you from start to beginning. So thanks again. Bye. All right. So I uh, hope that wasn't too long. Uh, I, I know I wanted to show you just kind of how it works. So the yogurt process is long. I mean, obviously, it's eight hours, so I couldn't theoretically start at 9 a.m. We'd be taking a lunch, we'd be done by, by 5. I don't think anybody would want to see that. So hopefully, just a little five-minute clip, condensed it down, and maybe gives you some inspiration that, hey, I can do that. I can make yogurt at home. It's milk and yogurt. That's basically all you're going to do. You're going to put the milk in. Four hours, it's going to preheat. You add 12 ounces of the uh, yogurt to a side bowl. Add a little bit of the warm milk. Dump it all back in. Four hours later, you come back and you have a lot of yogurt. Definitely. And what's great about yogurt is it's so versatile. I mean, for instance, here we just have a little bit of mint and um, let's go on the. Here on the, we just have a little bit of mint and raspberry. Um, here I put a little, I'm going to put a little jam on top. Let's see how that turns out, huh? So I got some fresh raspberries there, just a little bit of raspberry jam right on top. Oop, sticky. So what I like to do too is put a little honey in some granola. It's going to really, really brighten it up. So that's the yogurt setting, eight hours. Like I said in the video, it's a labor of love, but you know, definitely it's something that you're, you're really going to enjoy. Let, let's show this quinoa just up close. I don't think we've given it. Ooh. I mean, look at that. That just looks delicious, doesn't it? All the colors in there, multicolor quinoa. You can see the onion, the tomato, the avocado. There's uh, cucumbers in there too, guys. Definitely, definitely tasty. And the big bowl. Tell me that wouldn't look good on your Easter uh, potluck, right? Put that right on the counter. I would definitely get some. All right. So let me just do a little bit of clearing and then I'm going to talk about the product itself and I'm going to show you one nice little dish that you can make. Kind of one pot, easy to make, something you can do at home, something that doesn't take a whole lot of skill, but um, I think you've seen me make it before. It's called nabe. So we're going to try that. Uh, okay. Here we go. So 
like I said before, the star of the show really is the pan. So the pan is 18 8 grade triple ply stainless steel. I want you to listen to this just for a second. Do you hear that? I mean, that is durable, that is quality. Look at these handles. You can't bend them if you want to. Why? They're not riveted, they're screwed in with stainless steel screws. Look at the bottom is nice brush. On the inside, you're gonna have those nice markers. Again, for, oops, if you know and love our, our rice cooker, you know these, mark, these lines. See it for quinoa, brown rice, and let me show you the handle construction as well. See that, guys? It is sturdy. Try as you might, you're not going to break that guy. But it's just a nice pot. If you're going to buy that pot on its own, you're looking at easily a couple hundred bucks. So the pot definitely is, is something that you want to... Let me get this going. All right, just want to preheat it a little. So the pot is something that you definitely want to uh, take a look at. Again, it's a quality piece of cooking equipment and it's in a great electronic device. So it just eases the process, makes everything simple. You got enough power down here with the 1,350 watts. And like I said, nine in one functions on here. So once again, you have, of course, the quinoa, as we showed you, yogurt, those are the two. Then you have, in addition, a slow and low cooking. You have a searing and sauteing. Um, one more is brown rice, white rice. We couldn't be Zildjurushi if we didn't put rice, make it, have it make rice, right? I mean, it's kind of what we're known for. Kathleen Marshall. Kathleen, you said you don't know, uh, you want one of our products one day. Well, go to shop.zildjurushi.com. You can get this very unit right here on special. I'm not going to tell you the price. You got to go over there and check it out for yourself. Now, you see this nice uh, pot lid right here, right? This is standing up. When we're using it in the slow cooker function, as I'm going to show you here in just two seconds, that is really where this, this lid comes, becomes key because it has this ridge here on the outside. You notice it's slightly angled as well, but there's a piece of rubber inside here, this, this gasket. See a little black area right there? What that does is it traps all of the liquid inside of the lid so it stays in the lid and not all over your countertop. So that is a huge, huge key that I, I love. I mean, because when you take the lid off, what's the first thing you're doing? Where do I put this? Am I going to put it like this? And then it's spilling all over the place, right? Or maybe it's going to tip over. That is, that's not tipping over. That's, that's pretty durable, pretty steady. It's not going anywhere. And it fits inside the lid. So that's why all the condensation can run back inside of the lid and not drip out and pour out all over your countertop. So we're going to let this one get hot for a second while we discuss the thing, the one dish over here that's been absolutely killing me, the pot roast. And it's killing me because I want to eat it and I can't. All right, we ready? Ready for the reveal? The pot roast. So let's, let's count again what we've done. And there you see, see, ooh, can we, let me pull this back. There we go. There's that liquid pooling in the, in the lid, you see? So uh, my countertop is dry. It is not soaking wet with moisture from, from the cooking process. Now, the pot roast is, recipe is available on zodrushi.com. Uh, it's also included in the instruction manual with the multi-cooker. But let me show you. So uh, set it and just kind of let it go. And this beef is absolutely perfectly cooked. Look at that. Falling apart, just fork tender. And what's great is it's not falling apart to the point where it's absolute, where it's just totally stringy. You know, it, it still has some, some, uh, you know, depth binder. You can pick the whole thing up here, put a little carrot in there. Let's see what else we got. We got potato right here. Who doesn't love potato? And some celery and onion. I know we're in here. Can't go wrong with that. So here's going to be our pot roast recipe on uh, shop.zojerushi.com. Hey, oh, am I dripping all over the place here with the pot roast? Sorry. But uh, I mean, look at that. So just tender as can be. This is made in one of our functions, which is going to be our slow cooker function. So keep that in mind. What other machine do you know out there that you can buy 
that's going to give you the option to make fabulous rice, great quinoa, a perfectly cooked pot roast, and also, uh, what else would be, yogurt. I'm gonna show you using it as a hot pot here in a few minutes. Phenomenal, I mean, it's, it's a very versatile machine, and the smell, I, I mean, I wish, I wish we could definitely get you all in here to smell this. It smells fabulous. If you want to use the, uh, want to get the recipe for this one, it is on zildrushi.com for, it's just pot roast. And also you can get it with the uh, instruction manual. Comes with the recipe book. Whew, boys, let me slow down a little bit, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. Let's go back to the main one here. So pot roast look great, right? It smells even better, believe me. I'm over here. It, it just smells out of control in here. And the pot roast is something where if you're busy on a, on a weeknight, I know right now it's uh, spring, which means baseball season is coming around, right? Especially for young guys like, like I have. So the baseball season is easy because what we can do is set everything in the, in the machine. Uh, pot roast, I think, is four hours to go, five hours to go on the recipe. And we come home, go home at lunch, set everything up, set it, turn it on, ready to go. When we come home, it's absolutely perfect. You can also set it as, as a slow cooker if you needed to cook it for a longer period of time. But um, overall, great, great smelling machine. Or uh, whew, that, that recipe's top notch. Where are we at here? Oops, starting to get warm. Okay, let's get this jam out of the way. We don't want to put that. Let me show you what I got for you today. So this is going to be our nabe. We're going to do a seafood nabe. Nabe is basically a Japanese style uh, stew, which is usually a wintertime stew. But since we're in the spring, I thought it would be nice to have a nice seafood spring uh, nabe because just it's a little lighter, it's a little fresher. You know, the uh, weather outside is perfect, 70 degrees today. But um, definitely something where you know, it's not going to be too heavy. You're not going to eat a lot of heavy pork or beef or anything like that. Some nice sliced seafood, some shrimp, scallops. Let me just go ahead and show you what you got. So Nabe, the hot pot base, and this is another feature I wanted to show you. It's actually not um, featured in as one of the nine functions, but it's something you can do as a hot pot. So if you've seen us do the hot pot videos before, we did a Nabe and we did it with pork. So this is a little bit different, as I said, just seasonal. But let me show you what's in there. So we got some shiitake mushroom, some tofu back here, some little enoki mushroom, uh, green onions here. These are uh, Tokyo, help me out in the chat. I'm sorry, help me out in the chat. Beautiful shrimp, carrots. This is a yellowtail and scallop. And there's a cabbage underneath all of it. So it's designed as a one pot meal where you can eat it and enjoy it with friends and family. That's really what the nabe is about. Ken Villa and Damon James, thank you very much for watching. And Yul Cherub, Valerie Ahara, Mona Grandboys. I don't know, is that your real last name, Mona Grandboys? Marilyn Morgenstern, thank you for watching. Kathleen again. Uh, Keiko Suramachi, thank you. Amanda Kirvo, thank you. Judy Shimizu, Anna Robles, Eugene, Mary Wu, Steve Tashima, Vivian, and Wendy. I think I got everybody. Thanks guys. We appreciate it. All right. So I'm just waiting on it, everything to get hot. Okay. It's pretty hot. So now we're going to go ahead and add our broth. Try not to spill this too much. Can you hear that sizzle? Sizzle is nice. But the great thing is too, the outside, not hot at all. So everything is contained. The heating element is contained, insulated around the outside so that you're, everything is going to be heated inside, not burning yourself. Uh, first thing with nabe you're gonna wanna put in is going to be your mushrooms. So the mushrooms take the longest time to cook. Little shiitake mushrooms. If you have a Japanese uh, grocery store nearby, you can go in there and get what's called a nabe set. Some of this is from a nabe set. I won't be uh, you know, too proud to say, I think it's very simple to do. Just grab the nabe set. It comes with the cabbage, the mushrooms, the little enoki mushroom, and also some greens. So let's go ahead and put the uh, mushrooms in. I'll try to flip these guys upside down. Stems are still on them. There we go. 
And what we're going to do with the, the hot pot basically is just get everything hot, get it all boiling, get it going. Um, the machine is, is doing its thing. As you, as you heard, it, it's, it's already getting hot. Ooh. Uh, da, da, da. Tokyo Neji. Yes. Big green onions. Tokyo Neji. Look like scallions. I'm sorry. Or Japanese green onions. See? See? I knew it. So then now we're just adding a, another thing over here to our spread with comes with our roast beef. All of this, guys. All of this made in one machine. One. And guess what? I didn't burn my hand. I didn't do anything like that, right? Everything is very, very simple. You know, I'm going to use the smaller ones just for space purposes. But it could be one of those things where you know, your friends come over. Oh, you have the uh, quinoa salad today. Oh, you have the pot roast. Yeah, I use the same machine for both of them. Just rinse it out. It was good to go. So interesting enough, right? OK, we're starting to, um, let's see. I think it would be OK if I switched. Yeah, I'm going to try to switch this over to the um, to the close-up camera just for you guys, just so you can see. Let me clear some of this room. Oh, that's what you get when you have a, a machine that can do just about everything. You have everything out ready to go. So it's a multi-cooker and it takes a multitude of, of stuff. All right, let's take this one. Ooh, boy. I got it. All right, here we go. Okay. Turn that back on. So it's very simple. Just unplug. There's one, one plug in the back. And let me get back over here so you can see we've changed a little bit. All right, let's get the spread over here. Look at everything that's going to go in here. Ooh. All right, let's look at this sucker on the close up. There it is. Look at that. How delicious does that look, huh? It already smells fantastic in here. And now I'm going to cook all that stuff. Uh, nine convenient settings. There we go. OK, there's the broth that, that I put in. You see the mushrooms are going just going in there. This, it's coming up to a boil. We're going to get this hot enough to just kind of soften everything and get these mushrooms cooked down a little bit before we start adding our other uh, products. Let's throw the carrots in now. Those seem to take the longest. So that's that's what it is. You just want to put the longer uh, things that take the longest time to cook in first. Carrots, mushrooms, obviously. Um, how long are we on this one? There it goes. It was trying to hide from me. Okay. So we got the carrots, we got the onions or uh, mushrooms in there. Put the probably, let's see, tofu in next. Let me jump into the chat, see if we have any more questions. Our Kathleen Marshall. Yeah, it looks good. You should smell it. It looks smells absolutely fantastic. And you can get one of these yourself at uh, shop.zodrushi.com. So if you go there today, you can pick that up. Oh, let's see here. Going on 30 minutes. Lady, thank you for joining us. Carrie Blaine, thank you for joining us as well. All right, guys, so let me explain a little bit more about the, uh, let's go back over here to the close-up one. Just because I know it's a Friday afternoon and I really don't want to take up a ton of your time, I'm going to kind of explain um, how this is going to work because the machine is, is, is getting hot. So, and unplugging it probably didn't help as well. What this is going to do is come to a boil. As you see, we're already getting some smoke billowing up. And then you're just going to start adding your product, your items, in different areas of the bowl. So what that does is say, for instance, 
Uh, I'm going to put the shrimp over here. I'm going to put all of my scallops here. And then uh, the veggies, you know, kind of it maybe in the center or something. What you want to do is make sure that the pot is kind of portioned out so that everyone can get something of what they want. Um, if you want, we're going to hang on for a little bit, um, probably another 10, 15 minutes. Let's see what we'll go, how it goes. But in the meantime, I probably should have started this much earlier. Just my mistake. I got so carried away talking about, you know, all of the other functions that we have here that that one kind of, my apologies. So it's going now. Uh, if you're looking for it as a hot pot, maybe we can record the video and, and we'll finish that uh, at a later date and post this on Facebook. See, so, do we have any questions in there? All right, so let me recap it. Once again, we have the multi cooker, which does how many settings? How many? How many? How many? How many? Nine. Nine convenient settings. And what are one of them? Quinoa. What's another one? Slow, low cook. Look at that. Look at that pot roast. Tell me you don't want that. And again, what's another? I showed you five minutes of how to do it. Yogurt. Woo. So there you go. Yogurt, quinoa, brown rice, white rice, sear, saute. Uh, we're using it as a hot pot right now. We start to see the condensation growing on the top of this lid. Uh, let's get the zoom in here on the close up. See, it's, it is starting to get a little hot, but we're still maybe 10, 15 minutes away. I know we've gone on 30 minutes already, so I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I want to appreciate you staying on for us so much, especially uh, Kathleen. You've been here since the beginning. Carrie Blaine, I want to thank you again. Letty and Terry Tyson, the new watcher. Thank you so much for joining us, Terry. So uh, we'll finish up the, the uh, nabe on a stream, and we'll get that. We'll see what we can do, how we can post that. Figure, we'll figure something out. At least I'll show you the finished product. How's that? But uh, again, if you want to cook multiple things, you don't want to take up too much countertop space. Maybe you already have an electric skillet. It replaces that. Maybe you already have a slow cooker or crock pot. It replaces that. Maybe you have a rice cooker that you're not too thrilled with. Not one of ours, right? It can replace that. Uh, maybe you want a, something versatile that can make quinoa. Nine in one, right here, quinoa. And again, maybe you're looking for something that can sear slow cook and saute all in one pan. One pan means what? One pan means you have one pan to clean up. That's where the one pot meal comes from is you have one pot, one pan to clean. That's it. Simple enough, right? So if you're looking for something as versatile, looks fantastic. Brushed stainless steel is going to match a ton of appliances in your, in your kitchen, right? Brushed stainless stove, brushed stainless uh, refrigerator. It's going to match all of that other stuff. Um, and you want uh, something that's, that's versatile, travels pretty decently, I would say. I wouldn't re really recommend it, but you could, you could travel with it, definitely. Uh, and it's something that you're looking for one to replace a lot. That's what the multi-cooker is for because it's multi-cooker. So again, let's run them over. Sear, saute, those are the two. That's going to replace your electric skillets, right? Then you have slow and low. That's, that's your crock pot replacement right there. You have white rice and brown rice, and those replace a non-Zojirushi rice cooker. Just telling you, can't be one of ours. Got to replace something else. And then uh, you have the quinoa function. Not many rice cookers do quinoa. We happen to have a couple that do. If you look on shop.zojirushi.com, you can find one that does dedicated quinoa setting. Or yogurt. This is the only machine we offer that does yogurt setting. And I showed you, it's such a labor-intensive process. I think we're starting to get some noise over here. Yeah, some nice steam coming up. Yogurt is a very labor intensive process and that's why uh, it, it takes so, so long to do. And then again from there, uh, steaming function, which I, we, I really haven't even talked about much, did I? Did I show you the steaming tray? Steaming tray here. Oh, put a whole row of dumplings on there, put some water underneath, hit the steam function, fantastic. You wanna steam some veggies, some fish, uh, what else could we, oh, we could definitely steam some of these shrimp, shrimp, scallops, anything you like. Steaming tray, uh, maybe tamales, I don't know, we'd have to maybe make them a little smaller to make them fit, but anything you need to steam, you could definitely do inside the uh, multi-cooker. So if you if you're have a, a pot or a pan or just a tray like this that you put inside of another pot, the multi-cooker replaces that. 
So it's just one of those things where how much value do you want to put into one product? This is nine in one. It's got plenty of value. It's something that uh, put on your countertop. It can do a lot of things. So I won't hold up too much of your time, guys, but I want to thank you for joining us. We did the quinoa. We did the pot roast. We did the yogurt. It all looks delicious. You should smell it in here. Uh, we'll go ahead and put the finished product of the Nabe Seafood on Facebook for you to see. I'll try to shoot a little nice little video showing you how everything went together. But thank you guys for joining us again. My name is Ed, and I'll see you next time. Take care.